This is a 1994 Toyota pickup. And this is a 2003 Volkswagen Jetta TDI. And for some of you that know these Toyota trucks, this one has the infamous 3.0 V6. The one that a lot of people have problems with. So I had an idea in my head to combine the two forces of German engineering and Japanese engineering to make one super awesome truck. And that is the beginning of the next project. But before I get ahead of myself, what's a super awesome truck without a super awesome bumper? So I made up this bumper kind of as a frame to begin with. And uh, it's really simple, just to use the five piece of stock here, come up, welded it in a T, and then I'm just starting to build the face of it here on the other side. And it's still very boxy, but uh, you're gonna see we're gonna work on it a little bit today and try to get it back looking a little bit sleeker. And just to show you guys, this is the inspiration I was going off of. I'm trying to mock something like that to the best of my abilities. I know it looks pretty bulky now, but I think that with a little fine tuning, I think we'll be able to make it look a little bit better. So here we go. I built this bumper purely out of eighth inch, four inch wide flat stock steel. Uh, just because it's what I had laying around and to finish off the face for this part I needed a piece of three inch So I cut it down using the bandsaw that I converted previously It did work the bandsaw probably didn't like it and it definitely dulled out the blade But um, in the end it did work. It made a nice clean straight cut and I couldn't have been happier with the piece that I needed Then it was time to prep the face for welding. I ground down the vertical pieces at a slight diagonal so that the bumper face has a little bit more definition and it doesn't look as flat across the whole thing. And then I tack welded everything together and then I seam welded all the things shut with a stick welder just because it's, it's less wire and I don't need argon and things like that. And then I cut it out all out using my plasma cutter. I wish I got video of this. Um, I just kept rocking and rolling on it, and this is the final product. I spent a lot of time cleaning this with a wire brush and wire wheel, and then all the seams that were once butt joints together, I ended up using just a little bit of primer to help work its way onto the exposed bare metal. You'll notice I look a little different because I ended up not painting this until a few months later uh, where I had the time. I got super busy as I built the bumper with everything going on and then all of a sudden I didn't with the virus. So I hope everyone out there is staying safe and healthy. Uh, but I ended up buying this kit on Amazon for $130 I believe it was. And that came with the activator, the base coat, and the gun. And you will see how it turned out. Raptor supplies you with a measuring cup, which is really nice, uh, and it's for the activator so that you can add the perfect amount of activator to your base coat. Um, in this circumstance, I only needed one bottle for this job, uh, but if you're doing a frame, you might need a, a lot more. So anyway, I looked inside the base uh, bottle and it kind of looked like a white chalky color. And at first I thought I ordered the white color kit by mistake. And little did I know that I actually ordered the tintable version kit, which you can make this stuff any color you want. You just have to add a urethane paint. And on the Amazon listing, it really didn't specify that, so I didn't know. And so I had to quickly run out to Napa and get some black urethane paint and then add that to the mix. And then I was able to apply it. In the instructions, Raptor said that I needed like 10% paint in there. And this is just pure urethane paint. So in my case, I bought one pint, which was more than enough. The idea is behind this, and it's, it's pretty neat. You just take your activator, the amount you need, 
pour it into your bottle, then add your tintable color, and then you mix the whole thing together in the bottle. Now, if you're going to be doing a bigger job, such as like a truck bed or frame, some, a wider area, you might need to mix it up into a bigger vat first, um, and then put it back in the bottle because the bottle is your hopper for your paint gun. Most people like myself are going for the like off-road rugged look uh, in this paint. You know, by all means, you can go for a smooth uh, finish if you want, um, but you're gonna have to vary your air pressure and how you hold the gun. Now, Raptor, Raptor specified that I need 60 PSI of line pressure, and in this kit particularly, it didn't come with an air regulator, so I had to steal one off of another paint gun I had and just put it in line. They also specified something like 18 to 20 inches. Uh, you're supposed to hold the thing away from your workpiece. And so I tried to do that uniformly through while I painted this back part of the bumper. And you can see here, I'm going for all the edges and all the corners and all the seams first to see how it lays and to just get those dried up and then move on to the other side. You'd be surprised how fast this stuff activates. Um, and in this bright sun, it was something like 30 minutes. It was pretty dry um, and I did two coats on both sides which is more than enough but I had the paint and if I didn't use it it was just going to dry up and go to waste in that bottle. The back side of the bumper set up in about 45 minutes which is pretty fast for paint. Um, I attribute a lot of this to being in the direct sun and it was pretty warm that day. It was somewhere close to like 75 degrees. So it was like your ideal painting conditions, uh, low humidity and all that. Uh, the Raptor paint is a very forgiving paint and to get like a run out of it um, that you would in a two stage auto body paint, you would have to hold the gun very close for a very long time in order to get a run. Um, so I did like that about the paint. The pot life, I didn't have any issues with that in the bottle. Um, and from start to finish, it was something like an hour and a half between the two coats I did on the back side and the two coats I did on the front side. So you might be asking, is this kit worth the money? And my answer simply put would be, yeah, it is. Um, I do like this product a lot and I like the coverage and I like the uh, grit and texture that it has to it. The only drawback of this kit, and I should have been wiser when I bought this on Amazon, was that I bought the tintable version. Um, so, Raptor out of the box, they sell a few different colors. They sell, I believe, white, black, and then tintable. So, not knowing, I thought I bought the, the black color version. And uh, so when I went to mix it all together, as you guys saw before, it was like a white, chalky paste in here. And at first, I thought that I bought a white kit, which is the opposite color of what I wanted. So uh, in the meantime, I ran out to the auto body parts store. I got them to mix me up a pint of black urethane um, paint and then add it to the mix. And I mixed this together for about 10 minutes. I, I really mixed this well. Um, when I went to lay it on, it kind of gave me this like brown, gray, murky color. Um, that's the only thing I don't like about the way it came out, uh, but I think that I could easily fix that with just a spray can of like Rust-Oleum Black just to put some color on top of it and be done. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, I would recommend this to other people and out of this kit, I think it was like $130. I used one bottle, which probably was more than enough for this bumper. Um, so now I got three more bottles and I can always mix this stuff up later. Uh, I have some ideas like unibody floors, um, Maybe I'll do the frame of the Toyota and such. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys all stay safe in these crazy times. Um, and here's some pictures of it mounted to the truck.